I wanted to make a, a few brief remarks about uh, Musa, uh, Imam Musa bin Jafar al Kadim, who is the seventh Imam in the Shiite tradition, uh, and whose anniversary we will be commemorating this week. The reason why I think it's important, actually Yasser brought this up to me that we need to discuss this today, is essentially because for the same reason that we decided to talk about Imam Ali as well, and uh, perhaps in the future about all the Imams. In the sense where we have sort of restricted an understanding of them to a very uh, politico historico centric understanding, without considering so many other contributions that they have made for humanity and for society. Uh, so, Musa bin Jafar al Kadim, or Imam Musa al Kadim, the seventh Imam, uh, we all know that he's a contemporary with the Abbasid period, the Abbasid Caliphate period. So, the Abbasid Caliphate period of people that are not familiar with falls after the Umayyads, they come up, and they had claimed hereditary succession from the Prophet Muhammad, from, but from the lineage of Ibn Abbas, who was the uncle of the Prophet. So you have the contemporaries of the Abbasid, so you have Mansur, Hadi, Mahdi, and Harun al-Rashid. Obviously of this lot, Harun al-Rashid is probably the most heard of because everyone uh, congratulates him or commemorates him in the sense of being the founder or being the caliph who founded Bayt al-Hikmah or the, the House of Wisdom. We can analyze Musa al-Kadim from the heritage that his father had left him, so Jafar al-Sadiq. Uh, Jafar as sadiq as well, we've also, as well as with all the Imams uh, belonging to the family of the Prophet, of Ahlul Bayt, are sort of understood in this one aspect without considering the other dimensions of their, of their political, social, humanitarian, and intellectual heritage. So Jafar as sadiq can be analyzed in two esoteric sciences. One is the divination, one is alchemy. I think most people are familiar with alchemy because of Jafar ibn Hayyan. And Jabir al Hayyam gets his inspiration from Jafar al Sadiq. Uh, Jafar al Sadiq was a great teacher, a polymath in many different areas of the sciences. But one thing you have that is distinct from uh, Jafarian science, from contemporary science, is that you have the esoteric, which has now disappeared in the contemporary sciences. So now there is no meaning to what we discover in science, it's, it's destroyed. Whereas when you had the esoteric sciences, you had the f meaning, the every word, every letter, every uh, letter, every new number had a significant meaning, and this was conveyed in his divination, which is Kitab al Jaf. So, as was written here, the Kitab al Jaf is the uh, apocalyptic predictions on the advent of future using divinatory techniques such as gematria, Hisab al Juma, and the occult power of the letters of the alphabet. Okay, so al -Jamatria. does anyone know? Can anyone guess what al is? Uh, al uh, algebra, isn't it? No. no. You're close. Is it like assigning a number to each uh, letter? Yes, yeah. but do you know what we yeah. call this today? Algorithm? Geometry. Geometry, actually. Uh, well done, yes, exactly. Uh, that's exactly what uh, this was. So Jafar al sadiq actually deriving from a lot of the Greek sources, but Jafar al sadiq has his own unique esoteric essence to it, the, uh, formulated a gematria, hesab, uh, a way of calculating things um, based on the physical motions of being. So even you have Aristotelian science at play here, where Aristotle does talk about the motion and calculating the rate of movement yeah, in his physics. Uh, so Jafar al sadiq also has a similar dimension. There's also divination, the mysteriousness of the numbers, symbology of numbers, and but we are we apply it modern in contemporary ways to understanding the Quran, so the letters and how much value they signify numerologically speaking. Uh, so, for example, certain chapter or the word Bismillah contains certain uh, numerical value. Okay, so there's also the Alm al Fa'il. The science of omens uh, that Jafar al Sadiq had also invented, which was the teaching how to interpret natural phenomena as good or bad uh, presages. You also have hemorology, uh, which is a div divinatory technique based on astrological calculations in order to determine the auspicious and also the inauspicious nature of specific years, months, days, or hours. 
so you have this aspect which Afrosadik's work. You also find the science of palmomancy, uh, palmomancy, uh, which is known as ektelaj al azar. So it's talking about predicting the future movements of a given person from, spo uh, from spontaneous pulsations and contractions of all parts of the body. Can anyone derive how uh, this can relate to today's sciences? Behavioral sciences? Behavioral sciences, yeah, sure. Would you say quantum as well? Yeah, quantum. Yeah, quantum. Uh, you can say lie detector for the pulse detection. The, the pulsating movements of the body, of the heart rate, of everything, to determine whether this person is reacting in a certain way, what does it mean? Isn't that so also is it, like an algorithm? It is an algorithm. It functional an algorithm? MRI. Sorry? Functional MRI. Yes, functional yes. MRI. Yes. Yes, that's very interesting. So they do the beha behavior study based on the signals they get signals. from the brain. Yeah. Okay, so there we go. So here we have, this is a major contribution of Jafar al um, and this is unique. It's specific to Jafar Asad. Yeah? Although you have the Greek sciences which, which, which are the inheritors of this tradition, but you also have Jafar Asad and a few other Muslim philosophers that had converted this into something of their own nature. But it is derived from Greek uh, basics. Okay, so one thing before I do continue on to the main uh, course of today is the legacy of Musa. We talked about Jafar and his father, what about Musa? Uh, Imam Musa has several, I guess, areas. I guess they're mainly logic, to do with logic, and to do with uh, reason and philosophies, a lot of philosophies. So one, you have the treatise on reason. He has an entire passage where he's, which is narrated uh, by Hisham, one of his uh, companions. Hisham, yes. Uh, which talks uh, about Jafar al-Sadiq saying there's nothing more in appreciating God than through the intellect, or through aql, or through reason, through rationalizing. Of course, now in the modern day sciences, and we're taught in religions that you should separate your intellectual capacity from your religious obligations. But here you have a big distinction from what Jafar al-Sadiq, what Musa al qadim and what all that Imam and Ahl bayt had taught from what, I guess, modern religion is disseminating today. You also have the hierarchy of the spiritual the semi, uh, dimensions of Aql. And I can go into that in a bit more detail. So Musa al qadim outlines the different spiritual aspects of the Aql, or the intellect. He discusses almost all the Quranic references where the root Aqala or Yaqilu appears and presents the Aql as a faculty for, for apprehending the divine, a faculty of metaphysical perception. So identify the Basar, uh, or the interior, but this is the interior vision, a light, a nur, located in the heart, and through which one can discern and recognize signs from God. So one, in, one quite important point of the doctrine is also mentioned, while the prophets and the imams constitute the exterior proof, or the wujah fazahira, of God, aq is the interior proof, hujat al baqniyah so the highly spiritual and religious dimensions of Aq stands apart from the constant parallels established between the Imam, or the exterior Aq, and the Aq, or the interior Imam. The latter is a kind of subtle organ uh, of religion without which man is cut off from his relationship with the divine plan. Without Aq, hi. without Aq, um, Without act, man is without religion. That is, without that which can tie him back to God. Man then forgets his condition as creature and falls into an impious selfishness. It is undoubtedly in this sense that Ali's words, as they reported by Jafar al-Sadiq, must be understood. Self-infatuation is proof of the weakness of the act. According to the tradition attributed to the first Imam, Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib, the angel Gabriel appeared to Adam and proposed following a command from God that Adam choose from among, among the three options three things. The aq, the intellect, the modesty, hayah, and religion, deen. 
So Adam chose the first of these, and the angel asked the other two to depart. So the angel Gabriel says to the other two, so Haya, to modi uh, modesty and to religion, go away, because Adam has chosen the intellect. Adam chose the first of these, and the angel asked the two to depart, abandoning Adam. They replied that they had received an order from God to remain always in the company of Ak, wherever it was. He who has Ak, says Jaffa, has a religion, and he who has religion wins paradise. So here you can see the interrelated nature in the spiritual dimension of Ak. Ak has a, a major spiritual, esoteric, uh, functional aspect to it in religion, which is highly neglected. And this is something which uh, Imam Musa and Kardin had highly emphasized. Look, we can go on ages about the contributions of each of the Imams. Uh, Imam Musa, we will contribute perhaps in the future, perhaps an entire conference on him, where we can discuss this in, in greater detail. One also important point, apart from the abstinence of the Imam from political involvement of the time, so he avoided politics whatever, completely, and what you find is a division of the early Shiite community, uh, you have the Ismailis that started to say, instead of Musa al Qadim, the other son, the, uh, the elder son of Jafar al-Sadiq, who was Ismail, uh, had more of an entitlement to the Imam, Imamate in English. Uh, so you have all these different uh, issues, and you have the revolt or the revolution of the Zaydis, uh, who were still struggling with the Abbasids just after they had struggled with the Umayyads. So you have this constant struggle within the early Shiite community. Um, and you see that Imam Musa had abstained completely from political involvement. One more point before I move on to the main talk. Negation of analogical reasoning. Now that's very important. Does anyone know what analogical reasoning is? <laughs> Do you know what, what's an analog? I know, we're fine. Making comparison. al qiyas so analy 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 uh, mm -hmm. analyzing, yeah. but comparing. Yeah, compare. yeah? so saying, uh, for example, let's see, uh, Richard's hair is black, my hair is black, therefore we may have a similar ancestry. Yeah? So you're deriving a conclusion based on comparisons. Does that make sense? But obviously that's not a logical answer, because you can have several black hairs and Indians from all over the world. But you see the an analogical reasoning has deficiencies in it. Yeah? So here you have Musa al in philosophy absolutely negates the usage of analogical reasoning. Do you know where analogical reasoning is very useful today in contemporary scholarship? Oh, that's one. But there's also one important as uh, uh, science which employs analogical reasoning. Thank you, well said. Evolution, exactly. To say that we have common ancestry, we see that there's common uh, comparative anatomy between individual between two species. Therefore, they must have a common ancestor. It's analogical reasoning. So here you have Jaf, uh, Imam Musa al-Qadim abstaining from it. He actually negates it. In natural passages, says to one of his students, "You have nothing to do with analogical reasoning." Wa ma lakum walil qiyas. Those who come before you perish because of such reasoning. When it comes to a case about which you have received information, speak about it. Otherwise, keep silent. Okay, so there's a negation of the usage of analogical reasoning that we find. Okay, so now let's get on to the main content, the main salon, the main content of today's talk. Uh, so after I can talk about the legacy of Imam uh, Musa and Kade. We'll now move on to the main content. Does anyone have any question for this sec section of what we have talked about? Um, <laughs> yes? What is numerology? Numerology is the study of numbers. So numbers. But in the Jafarian sense, so in the sense that Jafar Sadiq employs numerology, it's al jif which is a symbology of numbers, or the symbology of letters. So each letter conveys a symbolic number. So you know, for example, Bismillah uh, has seven eight six. Yeah, that's from Algebra. Nineteen one one zero. 
you want to, yes, yeah, so you have all these different uh, uh, new, numerologies, different numbers, that like, uh, letters that can be. Abbas, I had a... What is it? Seven? Six, six, seven, now. One, eight, seven? One, eight, seven? One, eight, seven? What is it? There's also a number, one, eight, seven. It's supposed to seem like some sort of thing. Okay. all boys get turned. Buzz, <laughs> <laughs> I had a question about when you said the Imam was not politically active. Can you clarify that? Wasn't he mahbus for like a very, very long time? That's what I wanted to say. He had imprisoned. He had no opportunity to be able to do that. So you had, with each of the caliphs uh, from Nasur, Hadi, he is for many years, but he had also been released and imprisoned, released and imprisoned. So I think, you know, maybe we should say not politically the way that the current... The current system is operating. Yeah, he was socially... Yeah. Socially active, for sure. And apparently, no, many kids, and I couldn't understand where we should be. We always no, was in prison. He was always in prison. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Have you heard that? Uh, but it's socially, politically active. Social, yeah, from a social... Right. It's not the way that the current that political ideology was taken. That's he was, correct. But he yeah. used to work too, which and I yeah, think people, is a bit of a that imprisonment yeah, is a I mean, Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. He wasn't. He was actually in prison. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> exactly. you could see all of the Imams, they were to jail, they were tortured, and they were killed. That's right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's So you see this general pattern oh, amongst them all. Yeah, exactly. So they kind of, this is to say, it's good to say they're socially, politically active. Yeah, for sure. They were socially active. Um, but now, Politics does lacks that social exactly. aspect, which is why I would not use the word politically active. Yeah. You get what I mean? Does that make Perfect. sense? Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's very socially involved. In fact, even from jail, he was very keen on, on studying and very keen on, on uh, disseminating his knowledge to his companions. That's even leadership. Even on leadership, yeah. How does this Hisabul Jamma, Hisabul Jamma, right? Sorry? Yeah. Jamal Triya. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. This is Jafar Asadi. Yeah. How does that uh, Hisab al Jamal is related to the to the study? I mean, in mysticism, there is a branch of study about the mystical aspects of choosing numbers. Like, so, uh, uh, I think Annie Mary Shimel had written one essay on uh, mystical aspects of numbers. Why? Like uh, why numbers like three is chosen? I mean, in if you if you observe the Vedic uh, 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 approach, yes. they, they they have a tendency, or I would say they have a talent of classification. Mm -hmm. They always approach everything based on classification. That's right. I mean, in Ayurveda, the the medical science, they approach the diseases by classifying that. Uh, they still argue that uh, there are only forty four thousand uh, forty four. 1,444 diseases in this world and 40,000 is for human beings and 4,000 for animals which are uh, for um, um, uh, animals and um, 400 uh, for the birds mm -hmm. and 40 for the, the, the reptiles. That's right. Uh, likewise, they, they, they have a ten, uh, talent of classifying everything. That's right. So for classification in mysticism, most of the mystical uh, school of thoughts uh, adopted number three as a uh, as, as a, a mode of classification. That's right. That's very interesting. So likewise, uh, I mean, animated. Let me stop you there. Why, why three? Yeah, why three? that's an interesting question. I mean, um, I mean. Did you know what six, six, six? Uh, exactly. There are there are studies. Yeah. Six, 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 six is the devil. Uh, that's I just said. whatever. I don't I don't but then, but then there's also forty-two. What's I don't 42? believe it. Yeah, see, I'm not either. Yeah, I, I think, but what maybe yeah. I could add, it's actually, you could look at the architecture, like the structure of the buildings that they were building, because they, are a lot, they had a lot of meanings compared to Western uh, structure of, you know, developing city, so yeah. and yeah. build, yeah. buildings. It's so because right. how aestheticism was closely related with mysticism, the yes. then time. During the exactly. classical period, aesthetism was very much closely related. That's if you right. go through the architectural right. 
calculations of Taj Mahal, for example, yes. or Cordoba, for example, you will see tremendous Never amount more. of exactly. mystical exactly. Even elements. Even the pyramids present. in Egypt. Yeah, yeah. Then exactly. Then yeah, yeah, yeah. I had written one a short article on the, the mm. mysticism of numbers, which is based on anime Rishi males, right? Yeah. Now. I think it is there in my Facebook notes. Well, we have, a topic. Sure. We have a topic next week to talk about. Ah, nice. <laughs> which yeah. will connect with this exactly yeah. on the eschatology. No, I was just asking, I mean, how, I mean, well, was that a part of uh, topics discussed in uh, uh, the, the uh, geometry of... Uh, exactly, that's exactly the kind of topics that would be covered, yeah. So the symbology of, of numbers. But I, if I can make one quick comment about uh, taxonomy. Taxonomy is great, but it also has the consequence of leading to logical positivism. Mm -hmm. Logical positivism is a big problem with contemporary science mm -hmm. because now you have everything can be reduced to rationale. Mm -hmm. That I totally lost control. Ah, this 440 this exactly has to be that. Yeah. So you have the problem with uh, numbers. A human being, beings become nothing but numbers, yeah, and nothing become a percentage. Mm -hmm. I think nothing no, but zero one. Zero one. <laughs> <laughs>